Okay, thanks, Coach Davis. Royal Howe, why don't you go first? Hey, Coach, I want to congratulate you on the win today. Um, can you just speak on just your team's defense? I believe Syracuse, the last three games, averaged less than seven turnovers. They had seven in the first half today. And can you just speak on just the job Leaky Black did on Buddy Bayham, one of the most prominent scorers in the ACC? I think he had 14 points on 13 attempts. Just speak on just your team's defense tonight. Well, we didn't play very good defense, uh, especially at the beginning of the game. I mean, you know, they shot 50% from the field. And so I, I just felt like, especially at the beginning of the game, they were getting anything that they wanted to. They didn't feel us physically on the defensive end. And we were allowing them to shoot the shots that they want to shoot and the shots that they shoot and shoot around and that they practice. And so um, I remember in the huddle telling them f for things to change we're going to have to get after it defensively. And we, we, and we talked about pressuring them more. We felt like guys that they can really shoot the basketball, but their their weakness was putting ball on the floor. And I think that resulted in some turnovers because we were able to pressure them and be able to get out in transition. But at the end of the day, it's about getting stops when you need to get stops. And that's what we did. Um, in overtime, they, you know, Syracuse was one of six from the field. So at a time where we didn't really play great defense or the defense that we wanted to throughout the entire game, when it mattered most in overtime, that's when we stepped up and got stops and it allowed us to be really efficient on the offensive end and very fortunate enough to win against a very good Syracuse team. Michael Cobb. Hey, Coach. At a certain point with a guy like Slider having a night that he has, is there a point where you just kind of have to tip your cap to him, even though you're doing the absolute best job that you can on him? Well, I, yeah, yes and no. I, you know, he was in a, a very good rhythm. Um, you know, he's 6'9". He can really shoot the basketball. And against any type of shooter, the number one defense against a shooter is length. And so the person that would be perfect to guard him and to probably slow him down a little bit would have been Leaky but I couldn't cut Leaky in half. And so I tried to and try to put half of him on Buddy and half of him on Cole, but it just didn't work. And so, you know, they just have two guys in Cole and, and Buddy that, that not only can they, obviously they make open shots, they can just make contested shots. And f specifically for both of those guys, the only way that you have a chance at defending them is you have to put size on them. Just it is what it is. And so there was a couple times where, you know, we subbed Puff in and put him on there and we felt like that worked. But, um, you know, we really love the playmaking and, 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 and the shooting of Caleb. We just um, he was in a nice rhythm and we just didn't have enough guys with length that can match up to be able to um, slow down Cole and Buddy at the same time. Thank you. JB Ricks, go ahead. Hey, Coach, congrats on the win. Um, when it comes to Caleb Love, when he's locked in and his shot is falling, how, how dangerous of a guard is he, not just in the ACC, but, but the entire country? Well, he, he's a fantastic player. And, you know, as I said before, he's had a fantastic season. One of the things that I love about Caleb is that you know, he can he can move on to the next play, next shot, next possession. And so in a situation where maybe defensively he makes a mistake or makes a turnover, like he's a guy that's um, he has complete confidence in being able to step up the shots that he made. Like there's two things. There's very few guys that can make those shots. But more importantly, there's very few guys that are willing to take those shots in those type of situations. And that's one of the many things that I love about Caleb is he's, he's always willing to step up. He's very tough and resilient player. And, um, you know, we had no chance of winning tonight without the plays that he made. And we have no chance of being the team that we are with, without, you know, the year that Caleb has been having. He's been fantastic. D.L. Brown. Uh, Hubert, uh, Syracuse jumped out to, what was it, a 9-0 lead to start the game. They started the second half with a 10-1 run. But in overtime, you guys 
had the eight old run to start it. What was the difference, you know, kind of in the reset and, and the amount of energy that you guys were able to come out with in that overtime to, to take over? I don't know if it was energy. I just, you know, in terms of just our collective spirit to, you know, to get after it defensively. You know, one of the things that I've said to a couple people, you know, yesterday and today, I felt like the, this is the healthiest our team has been all season. And I'm not talking about physical health. I'm just talking about in terms of like chemistry health. It's It's been the best that it's been all season. There is a um, togetherness that we have right now that um, has manifested into something that's just really special. Um, our huddles are full of encouragement. Um, we're lifting each other up. Um, we're finding the joy and how hard it is to be successful out there as a team and individually. Um, there's a collective togetherness that um, this group is forming um, more and more each day. And it's, it's just, um, it's a lot of fun to see. It's, it's, um, it's a joy to experience and it's unbelievable to be around. Andrew. Coach, you put Leaky, I guess, on Cole about the last six minute mark, five minute mark, something like that, and put uh, Caleb on Buddy. But then when they had that inbound play, you put Leaky back on Buddy and you forced that turnover, um, which led, I guess, to, to the shot that you guys had. Why did you make that switch back? And what is it about Leaky's ability to defend Bayam, especially in this building? Because he shut him down last year in the second half of that game and shut him down in the first uh, 30 minutes or so today. Well, in that out of bounds situation, out of bounds underneath, I don't care where Buddy is, they're looking for him. So he can be in section 305, they're looking to throw him the ball. And so we knew out of bounds underneath, it is high alert. Whatever situation they're looking for Buddy to get the shot. Um, the reason why we switched um, Leaky on Cole, because Cole was just in a rhythm. And so we wanted to put Leaky on him just to kind of give him a different look, kind of slow him down a little bit. Then they started going at Caleb against, you know, with Buddy. And I thought he did a pretty good job there. And then we switched him back. And so we were just, that was just my version of trying to cut Leaky in half and try to get him to play two different players. And I just, um, there's some really fantastic, you know, defensive players in the ACC, you know, um, Duke has a, a couple of outstanding defender, individual defenders, and um, I just, you know, I know that I'm their coach, but it's just hard for me to find anybody, especially on the wing, that has done a better job defensively in this conference than Leakey. Um, his ability to defend, his versatility, we can move him around, he can guard little guards, power forwards, and um, whether he wins it or not, he has to be in the running, strong consideration of being, obviously he should be first team, all defensive team in ACC, but also a defensive player of the year. He's been fantastic. Thank you. Trayvon, go ahead. <clears throat> You're muted, Trayvon. Hey, Hubert, could you take us through uh, that final possession of, uh, of regulation and when Caleb hit the three? He said that uh, that play wasn't particularly for him, uh, but you all were possibly looking to get an offensive rebound. How comfortable were you with him shooting that three from that deep um, with the game he had been having up until that point? No, I was very comfortable with him shooting the three. The thing that we talked about in the huddle was that take the first available shot. You know, against Syracuse's zone, if you wait, and you try to shoot a shot up against the shot clock, it's just, they're just very good at it. It's very difficult to get a good shot. And so, the, you know, the later in the in the time for us to find a good shot, it, it, it just wasn't going to happen. And so we talked about in the huddle, take the first available good shot. And I thought it was a good shot. It was a shot that, that Caleb has practiced in practice, and he has hit many times in games. And... Um, I was very confident that um, he would be confident to be able to step up and, and make the play. And then Gerard came down the floor and hit a 
really tough fadeaway over RJ to tie the game, but we were the play that we were running, it wasn't a specific play for Caleb. We just mentioned to everybody that we wanted to take the first available good shot. And um, against Syracuse's zone, that's what you have to take. Um, if you find a place where you can score and you put it in the hands of somebody that can make shots, you have to take that shot. And Caleb stepped up and made it. Right, we got time for a couple more. PJ and then Ross, and that's all we got time for. Sorry. Hey, Coach. Uh, so, you know, senior night, talking about, you know, the seniors, Brady put up 22, Leaky with some really great clutch plays on the assists and a lot of clutch defense. Talk about, uh, you know, how much those guys mean to the team, especially in a game like this, you know, a really tough situation. Uh, just talk about the kind of impact they have. Well, it was great. You know, I, I talked to him before the game and I, I you know, because last year with COVID, you know, just wasn't a senior celebration. You know, we have two freshmen and then we've got transfers. And one of the things that I said that senior night here at Carolina is um, is significant and serious. And that um, there is a responsibility, all of us, um, to make sure that the last time that Brady and Leakey and Ryan run off that floor and come through the tunnel, that they have a smile on their face and they have those memories. I shared with them that there's very few moments in my career here at Carolina that I regret. One of them, and I told them this, one of the things that I do regret is that uh, my freshman year, we weren't able to win on senior night for Coach Lebo. He was a senior and I was a freshman and we were playing Duke for the regular season championship and we lost and you know, a week later, we ended up beating them in the ACC tournament in Atlanta, but it was just really important for all of us to um, send them out in the right way. And I just remember um, feeling disappointed and feel like I let my teammate, Coach Lebo, down at the time because I wanted him to have that experience of having a good memory the last time he stepped on that floor. And I just told him that story and the significance of senior night and how important it is to play as hard as you can, not only for yourself, not only for this team, not only for this program, but for our three seniors. And I really felt like they did that tonight. Hey, Ross, last one for Coach Dave. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, it feels like that the Caleb Love experience is kind of like a roller coaster. Like there's really, really good moments and sometimes there's more frustrating moments. How does that, and then, you know, he was two for 15 before he went on the stretch that helped y'all win the game. How does that relate to his confidence and his ability to, to make big shots and step on big moments as you saw today? Well, it's not Caleb just being a college coach is a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a kiddie ride, you know, where, you know, the teacups where you just sit there and just laugh a little bit. It's, uh, I don't know if you guys remember at King's Dominion, the rebel yell, that, that's what it is, or the Cobra. Okay, that, that, that's what college coaching is. And so, um, and you have to find joy in how hard it is to be the best that you can be. But I, 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 that's one of the major things that I love about Caleb is that his toughness and his willingness to step up to the challenge. Like I can challenge Caleb. I can tell him when he's not doing the right things and I can praise him and tell him that he's playing great. And one of the things that I always tell him is I'm not calling you out, I'm calling you up. And I'm calling you up because that's how much I love you and that's how much I think of you and that's how much I think you can be better. And so, gosh, it's not just Caleb, it's everybody. You know, it's a roller coaster. They probably say it's a roller coaster, you know, playing for me. That's the fun part. As, as crazy as roller coasters are, it's fun. It's fun going through this journey with each one of them. It's fun to be able to be in their lives and try to help them and to encourage them and to teach them and to coach them and coach them every day. Like that's the fun part. It's not fun if everything is easy and everything, there's no adversity, there's no trials. That's the fun part. And so I, I find great joy in, in, in the up and downness of being a, their head coach. And there's no other place that I would rather be 
than right here coaching these guys. All right. Thanks for joining us, Coach Davis. Um, everybody here.